Good morning, everybody. Back in Bay Chemish, back in Eric's Stroll. So pretty exciting. We're back. Back in black. So, six parshas, parshas Korah. Actually, it's not. For most of you, it's Korah, but for us, Eric Stroll, it's Chukas. So, it's a little secret. Not so loud. I don't want anyone to yell at me from the other room. So, for y'all, it's Korah. But it's actually Kesher with Korah Chukas. By the way, um, Korach. So there's a pasuk Ash Ish Mefachet Tamid in Mishlei. One of the most famous, one of the more famous pesukim in in Mishlei. Person should always be afraid. I've said this pasuk. Rebbe uh, Bachai quotes it a bunch of times. People in Mishlei know this pasuk a bunch. And the Gemara in a uh, in Gittin, as we're preparing for the three weeks, um, talks about the the the, the pranis that goes on in Shlaim. So it starts off as that a person should really watch out for the consequences of small things, be nervous for anything down the pike. A person should always never be so confident. Okay, so in this parsha we have Korach. And the whole time of Korach, according to the Pritzadik at least, is when he sees the kavod and the honor, all the, the presence, 24 presents, the kohanim, he doesn't know, understand why why this is. Because Kulm Kadosh, he says, all the Jews are holy, all Jews, were all, were all, and which is true, all the Jews are holy. Even if you want to go out of the tribe, you are holy. You're, you're Kadosh. You're always going to be Kadosh. You can't, uh, you can't escape it. Therefore, well, you can't escape it. So what's, what's, what's the problem? So Korach gets, unfortunately, he's under the impression that because we're all Kadosh, look in the mirror, I'm Korach, I'm great, Levi, all that stuff. Jews, we, we have the Torah, we're doing a lot of great things. We're in, we're in the Midbar, eating the Mun, high level of Kedusha. The problem is it's not always be like that. And Korach doesn't see this, unfortunately. Korach gets a insight to his future, but actually causes a downfall of Shtekel. Because when Korach looks in the mirror, or he actually looks, he's able to get this Navua, that he's going to have Shmuel Hanavi, who is actually a Levi who takes the role of a Kohen. Elia Cohen wasn't the one to go out and uh, help the people. It was Shmuel the Levi who goes out. So Korach gets this insight that, you know what, we're all Kedoshim, we're all holy now, we're going to not have a problem at all because down the road I have Shmuel, we're going to be great, there's no need to have a level of Kohanim, Jews are Kadosh, let's, let's get rid of this whole system. The problem was, he was wrong. Uh, because in every generation, there's always going to be sinners, unfortunately. There's always going to be people that, even the good people, unfortunately, sin. And we're always going to need a Kohen person or a leader to help people out. So that's always going to happen. So what Korach was maybe correct at this time in the Midbar was a high level of Kedusha, but down the road, it was not the case. And I was wondering if even Korach, how Korach even see this now? If anyone has a good answer for this, Korach himself wasn't that great because he starts fights, he's hooking up with Dustin Aviram. He himself saw people at Maraglim, that people cried. He himself saw people do Avodah Zarah. He himself see people complaining. So I'm trying to understand, maybe someone has a good answer for me. Did, did he really believe we don't need Kohanim, we don't need holy people because no one's going to sin, we're all Kadosh? I don't know, it, it's a little strange. But either way, Korach makes a mistake, and he's confident. He was very wealthy, he was a big Tamachacham, he was a Tzaddik, he sees his descendants are going to be great, and he's confident, and he kind of now is challenging Moshe and Aaron. The problem was, this is his downfall. His downfall is exactly that. He was too confident, too arrogant, and this causes the downfall of this. A uh, person should always look where he is spiritually, not just that, but physically. Uh, in Chukas, Moshe is, Moshe, they, the Jewish people can conquer lands of Sichon and Moab, uh, Ammon and Moab, but only after Sichon took it over. The Jewish people were not allowed to start up with Ammon and Moab, but when Sichon takes over the lands, the Jewish people are able to kind of 
find Sichon and capture some of the lands. What's the difference? Spiritual talks about that each area has their own strength, each place has their own weaknesses, and the strengths of Amna Moab, literally in the land, was a sense of a gaiva, you know, that the daughters of Lot, uh, the sense of gaiva, the sense of entitlement, was permeated the land. And it took someone like a Sichon, who was called Melech Cheshbon, Cheshbon Shal Olam, someone who thinks about the world, a thinker, who was able to kind of weaken this tuma, weaken this, and the Jews were then able to conquer the land, which actually ties in today's Gemara, for those taking score in, uh, in Gittin, it talks about that Sichon actually purified the land at some level, um, which is interesting, uh, Amun Moav. But either way, either way, there's something to the land itself, that the land and Moshe couldn't bring the people there. Uh, Moshe had to wait for Sichon to kind of take over the lands. And even then, there wasn't able the ability to get rid of this bad tumma of the land entirely. Um, this sense of gaiva and taiva and a sense of hatred stayed with them. We know that some lands, we know that uh, some lands, you would see him, you know, some lands in, in Shechem, the Gilgo, had people, you know, killers there. Well, there were killers there. Well, some lands actually influenced the people. Okay, so we see that even if Korah was right, that there were all Sadiqim, you know something? There's no, no one's perfect. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect place. Because at some point, some people are going to sin. Some people are going to kind of learn from the land, the culture of the land, and, and do things. So Korah was not right. So even if Korah was right, that at that moment, they were great and, you know, great Sadiqim. At some time, they are going to be sinners. And we do need Kohanim to go out and help the people, influence the people. We do need a level of teachers and people to go out and help the people. The other side... Conversely, to someone who was very confident in himself, we have someone who does tshuva towards the end of his life. So last week on Friday, for those people, um, Rambam Yom just started a few weeks ago. Um, last Friday was tshuva, part of the book of the part of tshuva, and the Rambam quotes story of Yechania, who is Yehoyachim, and even though Yirmiyahu who calls him. He says to uh, Yechania, if you were the signet ring on my right hand, I'd, I'd rip you off. You're so, you're, so, you're so terrible. But then another Navi, Chagai, actually says to him, you're an Eved Hashem. You're like the Chosem of Hashem. You're a, you're a Tzadik. You're a friend of Hashem. So the Medrash talks about that Yechania, who's actually 18, uh, when he becomes a king, he's three months into his kingship from his father, Yehoyakim, Yechania, is taken away to Babel, Yuchanetzah, is put in jail for 37 years. And he does this incredible tshuva. At 55, he actually leaves jail, and his the, the son of Yuchanetzah, Ibel Merudach, he lets him out of jail, gives him a little bit of kavod, and he stays in Babel. But throughout the whole Chorban bias, he's in jail, he's by himself, and he does tshuva. And the Medrash says that they brought his wife to the jail so they can kind of keep the lineage because again he was the he was the second to last to go really you know was the last king but he didn't have kids but Yechania Yachim was be the last king of, of David the Mashiach and Yechania says you know we, we, we I, I can't do this I can't be with my wife she's she's a nida and he does tshuva he literally is not with his wife they wait and towards the end of his life Yechania Yechania actually does tshuva. And towards the end of his life, uh, Haggai actually calls Yechania, who years ago, Yermio, who says he was the worst, Haggai, he praises him. And Kach, his great-grandson, or his grandson, is Rubavel. Rubavel actually leads the people back to to build Yushalayim, uh, the second the second, uh, the second bias. So we see that on one hand, we have Korach, who's so confident in himself that he can't do anything wrong. But the other side, in the in the, in the Chelik of Tshuva, the Rambam, we have a story of someone who didn't have children. And even though towards the middle end of his life, 
he didn't have hope and he actually wasn't so confident in himself. You know what? I'll die in Russia, no big deal. He actually turns his life around to Shuva and there's actually 12 psukim. If you look in, in Yeshaya Mem Gimel, it talks about the 12, 12 psukim. It's actually praise to Hashem that he didn't forget a Yechanya, the Yechanya was able to do tshuva and said praise to him. So we see a little lesson from the parsha of not to be so confident in your ways. And no matter where you are, who you are, there's always a time for tshuva and there's always time to turn things around. Shabbat shalom.